Mom, Eliana said, do I love you? Yes, I replied. It's kind of like that joke about country songs of what do you get when you play a country song in reverse? You get your house back, you get your car back, you get your wife back, you get your dog back. Well, when a Russian novel plays in reverse, you go from complete despair to at least utter hopelessness. <laughs> so Ludmila Petrushevskaya is a name that is somewhat unknown in the West, but much more popular out in Russia, obviously. She's a writer that just seems to kind of capture not just a character or person's soul, but almost kind of a country's. This is a story kind of with, I don't want to say it's schadenfreude humor, but you have to have like that Russian humor where you have to be able to laugh at some really dark comedy. You have to be able to laugh at some sad points. But if you can, you will laugh. This novel, novella, absolutely hysterical. Hysterical. There was literally parts where I had to put it down because I had to belly laugh out loud. And my family's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm sorry, this, this novel is just hysterical. <laughs> but there's just something to be said about the life in crumbling Soviet Union, where we're supposed to be abolishing the bourgeoisie and evil, a connected state, where we have pensions, maybe a little bit more of giving, where we make sure that there's equal distribution in a sense. It's a lifestyle I think a lot of us in the West are unfamiliar with. The author turned 50 in 1988, and this story came out in 1992, right? So right after the fall of the Iron Curtain in 89, and then in 91, the dissolution of USSR, we have the crumbling Soviet Union, and we have a tale told by an author who creates this character, Anna Andreovna who I think the author really just gets. Whenever a character is around the same age as the author, there's always this connection, this bond sometimes that I think they're able to understand the plights of this character. And, and Anna is a poet. She's a struggling mother slash grandmother taking care of her two children from different fathers and even kind of their neglected children as well. It's unfair to say it's a story about love because it's a postmodern look at love. It's not just, is love one way? Is love something that you have to give and receive or transactional? I guess when we look at it, we have to think about it from like the Russian eyes in a sense, you know, mother Russia, right? That's what we call our country and even have like terms like babushka, like that archetype of the woman who was so resourceful and just took care of her family and was able to find and get what they needed when they had nothing to begin with. That's Anna, in a sense, is kind of playing with and against that stereotype at the same time. And we see her mother, Sima, who is kind of like this ailing grandmother mentally, who's not quite all there and is just kind of kind of like a fallen state, if you will. And you read the back of this novel and it says that it's rich in cultural mythology and sociological lore. The Time Knight examines the myth of Mother Russia as it shaped both sweeping trends and the day-to-day -day life of ordinary citizens in Soviet Russia. So do you take this story just to be the story of, of that babushka, the, the motherly love, in a sense? Or do you even take it a step further? We have, you know, the citizens that kind of are expecting handouts, take takeouts so that we can all be equal. And that's kind of what we see Anna go through. She gives unconditionally to her children, to her grandchildren, always looking out for the best of the future generation in the same way that the promise of the Russian soul was to its peoples in terms of this is for the betterment of everyone and how we can all give and be a little bit better off in life. I don't know. But either way, it's just a story where you have to just give in to being in this narrator's world. It's almost kind of like Rosa from Absalom, Absalom, where you're sitting down and she's telling you this story that is just ridiculous and she's not afraid to interject her ideas you know when she's reading her daughter's diary and she's constantly like mm -hmm, and judging all these choices it's hysterical the way that you know she's kind of viewing these are the right things to do and my children oh what, what can be done like they're gonna go off and be their own and do their own thing but I'm going to try to guide them I'm gonna try to push for what's best in life and whether you view that as Mother Russia or whether you just view that as the Russian soul and as individuals a journey through the fall of the Soviet Union, it's very captivating. And I say that from the perspective of the opening paragraph, right? Immediately, you know, the story opens up with her taking her grandchild to someone else's house where she's playing upon the cultural expectations to be offered food. They don't have any. They're starving. They need something. They need a handout. And they got to be... 
she's not naive enough to not know what she's doing, right? She tells us she knows what she's doing. But also, she's not naive enough to expect that the other people don't know what she's doing, right? She knows it's kind of like a burner card that as soon as she goes to this house and they offer her some food, of which they don't have much either, right? Again, that giving without expectations of receiving back, you know, she's not going to be able to go back to that house. It's going to be embarrassing. So you see these cultural and uh, these these expectations that we have from society that aren't looked at from a naive standpoint. It's a very humanistic way of exploring the life at the time, I thought. And it can be a little bit dark at time, but is that the author condemning the situation or is that life? And it's us condemning or questioning perhaps the choices that people make in life when sometimes all we can do is survive but criticize ourselves in the process, I guess. I don't know. It's a hard story to try to kind of articulate in words because it is hysterical, but then when you talk about it, you're like, wow, crap, that sounds real depressing. (laughs) But it's not something where I felt down upon reading, Uh, particularly when I I think when we can look at it ahistorically in a sense of the fall of the Soviet Union, that was back in 91, 92. And we look at how you know, cultures have moved on since then. And we look at how we look at, at how we view society and society and our interactions with societies. And I think you can kind of get an idea for how we move forward. And there's a lot to be said about what you want to get out of this because you can just read it as a just a simple tale. And the author even gives you lots of breadcrumbs in terms of this was a reference to a Pushkin poem or to a Gogol book. The one book. <laughs> there, there's plenty of references to Russian um, intertextual discussions too, that I think once you have read a lot of Russian literature, that this is a great book that you're like, Oh, I've read Anna Karenina. Yeah, I do get that. Oh, she totally is treating, you know, her son, the way that Anna treated her son. So you do get lots of these Russian feelings and, and emotions just mixed up in the bag as you're reading them. I don't even remember if I gave this a four or five star. It's one of those ones that I think stuck with me for a little bit. I always remember some of the little cute jokes. I think about Anna adoringly, about how she cared about her family and gave un, un, unexpectedly. And I don't know, I just kept coming back to the idea of of is this a allegory of the the USSR and Soviet state and how it gave to people and people took from from Russia without expectations or even giving back I don't know it's something that I think is worth exploring and I think is an excellent book to recommend to you and you share with me your thoughts upon reading. So if you check this out, please make sure you leave that comment down below and let me know what you thought of this novel. I thought it was a great read. Share with me why you disagree or whether you had problems with any of the humor. Una out. <laughs>